Hey babes, it's B. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be setting up my new bullet journal for the rest of 2020. The first thing I'm doing is writing my name in this Archer and Olive notebook, which is going to be the notebook that I'm using for the rest of the year. I did a notebook review on this notebook on my channel, so if you want to go check out that video, I will link it down below. Now I'm working on my key. I don't really need to use a key since I kind of have all of my symbols memorized, but I just feel like it's something that I have to have in my bullet journal. It just seems like one of those things that always has to be there, so I did that. And for these beginning setups, I decided to have a theme revolving around the actual notebook itself. So you'll see me drawing a lot of flowers and leaves, which is the design on the cover, and using the colors red and gold, which is what makes up the cover as well. Moving on to the next page, I'm doing a quote right next to my grid spacing sheet since I had a little bit of extra space. This quote says, big things often have small beginnings. I thought this was perfect to put at the beginning of my bullet journal since I start out with a small amount of spreads, but soon I'll have a big amount, meaning my bullet journal at the beginning is barely filled, but soon it will be completely filled. And I think that's very good motivational quote to relate to my bullet journal. For the quote page, I used the same red and a Tombow Furunosuke for a little bit of black and I'm using a gold pen around it to draw some leaves and sparkles and also at the bottom I drew a little plant growing that's supposed to represent the rose. Moving on, now I'm doing my grid spacing sheet. This is something that I saw on Amanda Richley's channel and I've been doing it ever since I saw it. So how this works is that you're first counting out the grid spaces horizontally and vertically by writing in their numbers and then dividing it evenly into sections of your choosing. I personally divided it into half and then into fourths because that's what I mostly use in my bullet journal. By looking at the sheet, you'll know how many spaces you need to have your page evenly divided. So say I need eight spaces for for each section to divide my page into four sections, then I'll know I'll have to count out eight spaces for each section instead of counting every single grid space and then dividing it and doing that every time I make a new spread. At first, I was a bit confused on how to use the spread, but I hope that explanation was helpful. The next page that I'm making is a year at a glance page, though it's not really a year at a glance, it's just the rest of the year at a glance. I'm only having the last six months of 2020 in this, but I thought that this was kind of a necessary spread just so I could have an overview of the months. And it's also helpful for me setting up my calendars later because I know which day the month actually starts on and which day it ends on. So as you can see, I've been using the same reds and golds and just a plain black marker. That's mainly my color scheme and my theme for these spreads, which I actually really ended up loving, probably because I picked out this journal and I love the actual journal. So the fact that it matches, of course, I'm gonna end up loving the theme as well. Also just wanna add, writing these numbers, it was a lot of mental power going into it. I wanted to give up several times. So yay me for finishing this spread. Next, since I have a little bit of space under the year at a glance, I put a little section for birthdays since I was missing this spread in my last bullet journal. It wasn't intentional that I was missing it. I actually forgot to put it in because I did have it in my first bullet journal. I'm bringing it back because it was helpful to see when the birthdays were all in one place without having to look at my future log and search for the birthdays. And speaking of a future log, I am doing that right now on the right side of the page. So both of these pages kind of all mix in together and it's really helpful looking at them in one place. I kept the future log pretty simple. Like the year at a glance, I only did the last six months of 2020. And for this, I did six boxes and just wrote the names of the months over them. Nothing too crazy. And then I added the gold details. The next spread that I'm doing is super simple. I called it memorable moments just so that it would have a little bit of alliteration, but this spread is just a place for me to put memories that I want to remember. I had this in my last bullet journal as well, and I really liked looking back on all the memories that I wrote down. And on the other side of the page, I did a travel log. This is basically the same thing as the memories thing, except a little more organized and a little more specific. So for this spread, I'm going to log all of my travel adventures. 
basically I'll write down the date that I went, where I went, and what happened there. So I'll write a few of my favorite memories in that place and it'll be like a more specific section for my memories, which is why I put those two pages together. Next, I did a check it out page and I called it check it out because normally I don't check out movies or TV shows. I only have a page for books, but I realized I do need a place to put a list of movies or TV shows that I've been wanting to watch because whenever I do feel urged to start a new show, I don't know what to watch because I don't have a list. I forget anything that I ever wanted to watch. So here I'm gonna have books, movies, and TV shows so that I have more options whenever I have free time. On the next page, I'm doing a wish list and a mid-year goals page. The wish list is somewhere where I can write down things that I want because sometimes whenever people ask me, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? I don't know because whenever I want something, I kind of forget that I want it. So I decided to make it a little bit easier for people and also easier for myself in case I want something but don't necessarily have the money to buy it in that moment. So I write it down and buy it later. As for the mid-year goals, this is where I'm going to write down the goals that I haven't completed yet this year and also write down some new goals that I might have for the end of the year. Now we are nearing the end of this video and doing the final spreads. Right now I'm doing my bullet journal theme ideas spread and as you can see i did this chart where i have the month and the theme i'm going to do i like to plan out which theme i'm going to do for each month ahead of time so i have this chart here just so i can write down whatever i decide on and the space next to it is where i'll write down any ideas that i have for it obviously these themes can change as i get closer to the month but this is just a way to have a general idea On the other side of the page, I have my YouTube video ideas as well as my YouTube growth tracker. For my YouTube video ideas, it's a pretty simple spread, just a box and a place for me to brainstorm anything I want to post on my YouTube channel. And if you guys have any suggestions, of course, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to that spread. For the YouTube growth tracker, this is something that I had in my 2020 bullet journal setup, but I obviously am not completing the whole year in that bullet journal, so I wanted to have the last six months in this journal because I knew I wasn't going to be going back to my old bullet journal just to fill out this YouTube growth tracker. So I'm just gonna have it in this journal and it's gonna be the same thing as my last one. So here's the final flip through for my bullet journal setup in my new bullet journal for the rest of 2020. I really, really like how this turned out, especially the fact that it's tied to the cover of my journal. And since I love my journal so much, I really love the theme that I went with. I hope you guys like this video, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up, comment something nice down below, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos from me, and turn on the post notifications so you know when I upload my next video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!